Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Cynthia Sear and it is a joy and a pleasure to have you here today. We're going to get right into it. Today's video is going to be all about how to have a slow living while being a stay-at-home mom or a homemaker. Stay tuned. <music> So if you are a fellow stay-at-home mom like myself, I get you. I understand exactly how those days feel day in and day out. We're human and we have chosen to be home, but sometimes our patience really runs dry. It's only been a short time since I've been a stay-at-home mom, but I quickly learned that my to-do list and all the million and one things that I wanted to do were wearing me down to the floor and I just could not take it anymore. And it was kind of like, what's the difference between being a stay-at-home mom or working my nine to five? I chose to be a stay-at-home mom, number one, because I really felt the calling of the Lord in my life, but also because I wanted to be intentional and purposeful in my in the rearing of my son. So the first First thing you're probably asking like I did to myself is what does it look like to have a slow down life? Slow living means slowing down the pace of our life and taking time to savor every single moment of each day. Instead of rushing, when we slow down, we open up so many more opportunities to connect with nature, to connect with our spouse, and most of all, to connect with her children. To be very honest, while I was working, it was really hard for me to have a connection with my son. We would be in the same room together, we would be eating the same meals together, we would sometimes sit down and even watch a movie together. But but my relationship with them just wasn't there. I was in the room, but technically I really wasn't present. And so lately I've been thinking, what does it mean to slow down and really sink into the role of being a stay at home mom? This has led me to learn a little bit more about myself, but most of all, to have my ears open to listening to the voice of God. The first thing you should do is go outside every day. Take time to exercise physically and just breathe. This is something that I try to do, but more often than not, I used to stay inside. And so lately, I have really been trying to either get in a early morning walk or even an evening walk. I mean, we do have a standard poodle, so having a dog is my excuse to walk, but just taking time to walk. Whether it's you're listening to a podcast or a sermon, listening to music, or just listening to nature, go outside and walk. Getting that physical movement and just enjoying that time away from your house, away from your to-do list, away from the million and one things that are bombarding you. Sometimes I walk and I just pray. I don't listen to music. I don't even take my phone. I just pray and I thank God for giving me another day, for giving me the ability to be able to stay home, for giving me the ability to breathe, to use my muscles. Taking a walk is so beneficial in more ways than I can even share with you. The second thing I want to tell you guys is find an afternoon pick-me-up, whether it's your favorite cup of coffee or a tea or maybe a latte. I know for me it is summer, so I am kind of staying away from hot teas, but nice cold infused teas are delicious. Right now I am loving a watermelon mint one. It's delicious. I also, what I do is I put some black tea after it's brewed in the refrigerator. So whenever I want to go ahead and make myself a boba tea, because y'all know boba is amazing. I just go ahead, pull it out of the refrigerator, put my coconut milk in there in my ice and I have it ready to go. Having a morning or afternoon pick me up, it is the best thing ever. It helps me reset my mind. And if I'm not ready for a full on meal, it does help me just kind of satisfy my hunger pains. Number three is something very simple. Set mood lighting. Lighting can really set the mood for you. You can romanticize doing your chores or doing something around your house, but a calm atmosphere really relaxes your body physically and it relaxes your mind. If you're in the kitchen and you're doing your dishes and you have this harsh white light on you, like I would feel like a fish in a bowl or maybe in a hospital. But if you have that nice yellow or soft white or even turn on a salt lamp, I know my son has a salt lamp and it just helps you relax. It helps with the ambience. It just helps so much kind of like get in that mood of just relaxing. I know I have things to do, but it is going to be okay if I don't get through all of them. So definitely lighting has a huge benefit and also just tons to do with our mentality, our way of thinking, and most of all, our attitude while we're a stay-at-home mom or homemaker. Number four is always have a book at hand. Now, whether you're a reader 
or you don't like to read, there are podcasts that you could listen to. There's also audiobooks, but I do like to read and I'm going to be very honest. I have four books that I want to read right now and I'm a little bit into each. Uh, there's really not enough time in the day, but have a book handy so that when you want to take that break, you can go ahead and pop that book open. So while you're going to the library to look for books for your kids, go ahead and see what interests you. Maybe it's romance novels, maybe it's how to's, maybe it's healthy living, maybe it's something totally fictional. I don't know, whatever sparks your interest. Find a book or audiobook that you like and just go ahead and dig into that book. Maybe five minutes, 10, 15 minutes, whatever your little heart desires. But it is so nice to have a book ready instead of grabbing your phone because slow living is all about being here, being now. And I'll be very honest, when we grab our phones, we get into that spiral of social media and TikTok and YouTube. And after we know it, it has been hours since we have actually spent time with our kids, since we got back on our things to do. So definitely put the put the phone away and go ahead and just open up that book. Number five is a really, really good one. And it is read out loud to your kids. If you have little ones, I know I've read to my son and I still do sometimes at night. We have a book that we read together. He enjoys me reading to him. Can he read? Absolutely. But it's more than that. It's just spending time together. Or if your child doesn't like to read or they don't have a book that they're reading right now, going into the room or whatever space they're in and just spending time with them. I did it recently, going into the room and just laying down or sitting down on my son's couch in his room, watching him play with his Legos, letting him tell me about the things that he's learned, the things that he's into, the things that he enjoys, but being present. So whether you are reading or just spending some beautiful time watching your kids play is such a blessing and definitely part of slow living. Yes, I could be doing the dishes, absolutely. I could be washing clothes. I could probably be cleaning the bathroom Room, but that time that I'm spending with my son is priceless and it is time that I'm not going to get back. I I'm going to be very honest with you. I blink and now he's 12 and he is a little teenager and that time is just time that I cannot get back. So definitely being present in the here and now and being spending time with your kids, whatever that may look like for your family. Number six is something that I enjoy doing all the time. I love to have music in the background. I already know, I say, Alexa, play instrumental Christian music and she already knows my playlist because I absolutely love it. For me, I like to play just nice, either instrumental, classical, just calming music. Sometimes I feel like things that have words in them kind of mess up my brain and I just, they keep me, you know, unfocused. They clutter me almost. So if I just listen to nice, calming music, sometimes I even say, spa music, relaxing music, guitar, piano music. The possibilities are endless, guys, but I love to listen to music. Number one, it sets the ambience. Number two, it clears my head and it just, again, romanticizes and it just makes things so much better. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do like to just stay quiet and maybe open up a window and hear the birds or just hear the rain. It's been raining out here lately, but having music in the background is part of being present, being here and now, and just being in tune with your home and what your body needs. And most of all, it sets those nice, calm, relaxing vibes that we all love. Number seven is one that I also love it's taking a nap. Now we hear this a lot when we're a new mom. Take a nap when your child takes a nap, but to be honest, I sometimes just feel so overwhelmed, just so exhausted. My to-do list is never ending and I have decided that if I want to take a nap, I'm going to take a nap. And sometimes I tell my son to go ahead and take a nap with me in the bed or to take a nap on the sofa or to take a nap in his room, but taking a nap and allowing yourself to kind of reset. Now, some people are okay with taking 30 minute naps. I'll be honest again, my naps are probably about an hour and I love them and I can wake up and I can feel rejuvenated and I'm ready to get the rest of my things finished, but taking a nap throughout the day, no matter how old your kids are, is always a benefit. It is just an amazing thing when you can just kind of reset your brain physically, mentally, and you are ready to tackle whatever that to-do list has for you. And along with that is being mindful, being mindful about your body. When you're feeling exhausted, when you're feeling tired, when you're kind of dragging along and you've had your pick me up and you've already walked outside and you're just feeling like there's nothing else, like you're just so exhausted and it's only like two o'clock, go ahead and take that nap. Nobody's gonna judge you. I know I'm not. Number eight is 
when you create a list, make sure that you kind of weave in some break times. This is something I was totally guilty of in the beginning. I wanted to have my to-do list to be this long and I had to do every single thing. And the truth is that we need to try to incorporate break times within our to-do list. Because if we are go, 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 my friend, you are gonna burn out before noontime. And so adding a break time in there, and that could be you taking your nap, it could be you taking your iced coffee, it could be you taking a walk, it could be just you sitting down and eating. How many times do you just are on the go, 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 and you do not have anything to eat? That's me. We're doing intermittent fasting right now, so I probably don't eat till about 10 30, 11 30. Sometimes I even forget until one o'clock, two o'clock, and it's like, where has the time gone? So definitely taking that time in your little to do list for those breaks is super, super important. Maybe during those times, you can even have a devotional, you can have a prayer time, you can do a quick podcast or, you know, read your Bible, read a verse and just meditate on it for a bit. Whatever that looks like for you, you need to have those break times in your day. It is super important for your mind and your health. Number nine, another thing is along with taking those breaks and having time to do different things outside of the home is have a garden. Now, I know you're like, well, I'm not good at gardening. I can't do any vegetables or fruits. That's fine. Recently, a couple of days ago, we planted a flower garden. And so if you can't do the fruits or the veggies, plant a couple bushes, maybe plant a couple uh, flowers and you can enjoy the butterflies and the bees. And we also have a little hummingbird feeder that we're so excited to be able to go out there. But sometimes when I'm feeling exhausted, I realize I have to go out there. Either I have to kind of prune some of the plants or I have to pick up some of my strawberries or I have to look at how my watermelons are doing. Um, but it is just such a joy to be out there, to just enjoy my garden, or even sitting outside and just kind of looking at the garden is always something very, very pleasurable. So have a garden. It could be a box garden, it could be a container garden, it could be maybe a couple plants in pots, whatever your, whatever your garden looks like, just try to have one. And if your little ones are with you, you can also have them help you be part of it. My sister right now has a 16 month old and she started growing tomatoes and she started growing peppers and little containers and her daughter gets to go out there with her and enjoy it and see it and start picking them. And it's just such a blessing to see what God has allowed us to do and has provided for us in our garden. It's just an amazing time. Sometimes I don't even want to come back inside because I'm just having the best time ever in my garden. And number 10 is have grace and self love because we're not perfect and you will never be. So if you get that out of your head right off the bat, you will give yourself grace and so much love. It is okay if everything does not get done. It is fine if things kind of roll over to tomorrow. Yes, we should have an outline of what we want to do each day because God calls us to be productive. But overall, God calls us to be just present. He calls us to be active. And so if taking care of your mental health, taking care of your physical body is what you have to do that day to be active, then that is totally fine. I'm sure on social media, you can see all these women that are getting things done and that's wonderful, but you need to know your own body and what is right for you may not be right for somebody else. I hope that you guys have really learned something with these 10 tips on how to live slower. Trust me, I'm applying them to myself and have really seen the benefits and the blessings because God calls called me to be a stay at home mom and he may have called you to be a stay at home mom or a homemaker or a housewife or maybe if you aren't able to do that right now maybe later on in the future but the sooner that we're able to know that there is no perfect plan there is no right way to do it the quicker we're able to just enjoy our lives in whatever season we're at. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe below. And if you like more videos like this, make sure that you share it with other people so that we can all have the blessing of God. I hope that you're blessed. You take care and I will see you next time. Bye friends.